Hi and welcome, I'm Lisa, creative team member for Whimsy Stamps. So today's video is going to be about digital stamps and Microsoft Word. I'm going to show you how to pull your images into the Microsoft Word program, how to resize them, mirror them, use multiple images if you want to create a scene with them, how to save them in picture format, and a couple other little things along the way. So the very first thing that I want to do is go ahead and pick blank document to start out with. So up here at the top left there, I'm going to go ahead and click on this blank document. Now, once we're into the Microsoft program, I'm going to go ahead and make sure my layout is correct. I'm going to click on layout and go to size and I'm checking to make sure that I have eight and a half by 11 inch paper, uh, size picked because that's what size paper that we normally print our images on. And then you can come over here to margins if you want to give yourself a little bit more room to work and you can change that up or you can just leave it as is if you're not comfortable doing that. So now that we have our layout ready, let's go ahead and pull our image in. So we're going to go to insert and pictures. Now your files are going to open up. You need to go to wherever you have your files located on your computer. For me, that's desktop. And then I have them in a folder, TP Dudley. And then I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And I'm going to bring in the PNG file of TP Dudley. And I click on it and then just hit insert. So now that we have him in here, you can see there's a box around him. That means that he's selected. So whatever you do in this program, it's going to do it to him. If you resize it, it's going to resize him. If you delete it, it's going to delete him. So just keep always keep in mind that if you see the box around him, you're working with that image. If you don't see the box like here, then he's not selected. So it won't resize him when you're working in there or whatever it is you're doing. If you delete or whatever, if it's not clicked, uh, the box is not around him, then it's not going to affect him. So you can't move him at this point unless you click down near him and you hit the space bar. Completely aggravating. So what you're going to do is go ahead and click on him and then go to picture format. Now, once you get to picture format, click on it, you get that drop down and you're going to go to position. You're going to get a drop down box. You're going to see it. You can position him anywhere on this eight and a half by 11 paper that you want him. Now, I usually just put him in the center because that's where I'm going to work with him at. So, but you can put him anywhere that you want to. So now that we have him in our program and we can move him about freely, we're going to go ahead and do a couple of other things with him. So what I want to do is show you how to go about resizing him. So we make sure that that box is around him and then we right click on him. You make sure the crosshairs are always within that box when you go to work with something. So right click on him and then you can scroll down to size and position. Click on it and a box is going to pop up. And in that box, you're going to see height and width. Now that's where you can go to change the size of him. And I recommend for beginners, this is how you start. You can click that down arrow and it's going to reduce the size. Now keep in mind when it's reducing the height, it's reducing the width for you. And that's great because it keeps the proportions correct and you don't have to worry about it. If you want to increase the size, just click the arrow button up. You can place your cursor in that box and then left click your mouse, hold it and drag it until it highlights that blue and then type in the size you want on your keyboard and then hit enter or OK and it'll resize him for you. So now that we have him resized that way, you can resize him also by going in, grabbing the corners of the images. I'm going to go ahead and size him back down real quick though. Now, uh, the reason that I recommend beginners start this way is you don't have to worry about the grabbing the corners 
and resizing him because that can be a little bit iffy sometimes if you're not real careful. So I do recommend that beginners start with the uh, right click and scroll down to size and position. So now that I showed you that way to resize him, now here's where you can grab the corners. If you scroll your mouse over one of those circles on the corner, you're gonna get this little line with two arrows pointing in the opposite direction. That means that you are on the corner. You can left click on your mouse when you see that, and then you can drag your mouse either forward or backwards to resize him. And it is pretty easy this way. So one thing I do want to point out is that you never want to resize him from the sides or the top and bottom. Now, if you resize him from the sides, it's going to squish him like you see here. If you resize him from the top or bottom, it's going to flatten him. So just keep that in mind. Any one of those four corners, if you have, grab it with your mouse, then you can go ahead and resize him that way. So now that we have shown you how to resize him, I'm gonna show you how you can bring in, maybe you wanna print out four of him. So just go ahead and place him up in a corner and then you're going to right click on him, click copy, and then you can just right click again and click paste. And then you can do it again and again. Now, once you have these in, in the Microsoft Word, you're going to need to what I call free Dudley up. So we need to go up to that picture format and then position him. So click picture format and then position and then click the position you want him to be in. And then once you have this done, you can just go ahead and print him. You don't even have to save it. You can just go ahead and do a direct print. And all you would do is go to file, scroll down to print, and then go ahead and print it. So that's how you could set up a eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper to print out four images at one time. Okay, so now that we have shown you how to do that, let's go ahead and show you how to mirror the images and work with multiple images. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of a few of these guys. I'm just going to right click and then click cut, or you can select the image, make sure the box is around them and hit delete on your keyboard and that will get rid of him too. So here are two images and we want to go ahead and mirror one of these images. So I am going to make sure the box is around the image and then I am going to go up to picture format. And once we go up to picture format and click it, we're gonna scroll over here to rotate and then scroll down to flip horizontal that's going to mirror our image for us. So now we have two images facing each other. You can flip him um, vertical, horizontal. You can rotate him with that in that box in the picture format, rotate. So now let's go ahead. I've sized one of those down and we're going to play around with these multiple images to create some type of little scene here. So we have a smaller Dudley and then a larger Dudley, and we want the largest Dudley in the front. So what we're gonna do is make sure our box is around him and he's selected, and then right click on him and the drop box is going to come up. You're gonna scroll down to bring to front. Now you're gonna see it says bring to front, bring forward, and bring to front means it's going to bring it closest to you. Bring forward means it's going to bring it by one layer. So if you had three images in here, it would move one layer. So each image is a layer. So I'm going to show you that now. So we just brought in another image. We're going to go ahead and move it down here with the others, place it wherever. I think I move it up to the top here. And I'm going to show you what I mean. So our largest image we want in the front, and then we're gonna go ahead and put the other images 
We want the one in the far back than the one in the front. So we're going to bring him to the front by right clicking, bring to front, and go ahead and click that. Now this little one over here to the left that I just selected, we need to bring him forward by one. So go ahead and right click and bring forward. That's going to bring him one layer forward. So now you can see he's second. So you have the largest Dudley and then this Dudley and then the smaller one in the back. So we have our three images layered there. So I recommend that you pull your images in, you, you know, copy paste your image, have two, three, four images, play around with this layering because you can really create some cool images with multiple digi stamps. So we're going to go ahead and finish arranging these on the paper with that bring to front. Now you can also use send back and it works the same way. If you click on an image and then you want to send it to the farthest away from you, then what you're going to do is right click on the image and then scroll down to send to back and then just go ahead and hit click send to back. And then if you want it to just go back one layer, then you just click send backward. So that's how you work with the layers in this. So let's go ahead now that we have him with his little kiddos here. And let's go ahead and show you how you can group these together and save them. So we have the images here. We need to select all of these images. So what you want to do is hold your control key down on your keyboard, and then you're going to select each image. So go ahead and hold down the control key on your keyboard and then click on each individual image. And you see how it puts a box around each of those. We're going to group those together. We're going to go to picture format and just go over to group and click group. And it's going to group all of these into one. So when we move these around now, they're going to move as one. We need to save these as a, in a picture format, but as they are right now, we can't do that. So we need to right click on them, copy and paste, and then go ahead and delete the original that you are working with once you paste the new one in there. And now we can go ahead and save this in a picture format. So we're going to right click and scroll up there to save as picture. Now, once this box over here opens up, you're going to see it says, PNG, that's what you want to save it as. So just go ahead and click, find the file you want to save it in, open up that file, and then once you're ready, go ahead and click save. Now this is going to save it as a PNG file, so you can open it up in other programs and work with it if you want to. So say you wanted to work with it in uh, PicMonkey. You can't open a Word document up in PicMonkey, but you can open up a PNG file in PicMonkey. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, if you're never going to use this in anything other than Word, then you can save it as a Word document and open it up again. But I recommend saving them as PNG files. So once you decide that, you know, you're ready and you're done, you can just go over to file, save as, do this like I showed you, pick the file and then click save and it'll save it to your uh, computer for you. So there we go. We've walked through. Um, you should, there's how you print there. You go over to file, click file, scroll down to print, and then you'll just click print when you're ready to print. So um, there we go. There's a quick intro to Digis and Microsoft Word. I hope this video was helpful and thanks for joining me and I hope you have an amazing day.